Pastor giving him all day today. It makes the devil mad and God glad. Amen. Is that all y'all got for real though? Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I'm excited that y'all are here today. Thank you so much for coming out and being with us today. And, and today I'm going to, we're on a series. We're, we're in a 10-part series. I know it's a long series. But this series is so, it is so important to me because this is what changed my life. This is what changed my life. I'm teaching on a series called Living in Your Divine Destiny. And, and before we get all into the Word, I just want to share with you a little bit, a little bit about my story. Many of you don't know, and I haven't really shared it, but uh, destiny, y'all see it. Y'all see it on a lot of the band members and some of the singers' shirts. And, you know, if you go to our, uh, in our garage, all the cars, license plates say destiny one, two. I went in to get my car fixed one day, and he said, what is this, destiny one, two, three, or what, what is this? And, and because this word, which is a scripture word, I'll show it to you, has changed everything about my life. And let me just tell you a little bit about it. When I was a teenager, getting ready to graduate from high school, I was so scared. I was so scared to graduate from high school because my dad said this to me. My dad said to me and my brother, my brother back there, make some noise, Mo. My brother, my dad took me and my brother and he said, he said, one of these days, boys, you guys are going to grow up and you're going to move out and you're gonna take care of a family all on your own. And my brother's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh no. The little cloud on top of my head, if my dad could have read it, would have said, I'm never leaving this house. Y'all pay the bills, dinner's already provided, I don't have to worry about doing anything. And I was scared, I really was. And because I didn't know what to do with my life. I was just like, how do you do this? How do you know what to do? How do you know what job to get? How do you know what career path? And I was really scared and confused. And, and my life proved that. You get it? I got born again when I was 18 years old, my first year in Ohio State, you know, at the Ohio State University, excuse me. And, uh, and, uh, but my life went tumultuous. I was born again on my way to heaven. But I didn't know what God had in store for me individually and personally. And I didn't even know at that point that he had a plan for my life. And ultimately, I went through a divorce. I went through a lot of, a lot of trauma and really painful years in my life until I was working this job. Listen to this. I was working. Believe it or not, I was working as a vice president in the bank. I went to college, got a degree. Now, it wasn't my first. I dropped out initially started going to school when I was 18 years old, but didn't know what I was doing and got distracted. Come on, somebody. Dropped out and got a job, and, and I thought at the time, and this is years ago, this is back in the 80s, you know, so I got a job, and, and, and in the, at the time, it was making, a, making good money for the time. You get it? And especially for my age, I was early 20s, you know, and, uh, and I was able to buy a house, and, and so I thought this was it. Until, and of course, my dad said, you shouldn't quit school. You figured it out, right? But uh, I dropped out anyway, but eventually he was right. Time, time would tell. That money didn't end up being what I thought it was going to be. And uh, anyway, I went back to school, got my undergraduate degree in accounting. Come on, somebody. Set for the CPA exam two times unsuccessfully. Somebody say amen. Still didn't get that, that there was something more in life that I didn't know how to get it. I didn't know. Well, anyway, uh, I'm born again. You get it going to church every week, but... But, uh, and loved God, but didn't understand what I'm, sh sh getting sh what I'm sharing with you in this series. Well, anyway, I'm working at the bank as a vice president because I understood how to work hard. I understood how to, you know, how to, I understood some principles of success. So I started working hard in the bank, made it, got a job as, as a vice president in the sixth largest bank in the country. Y'all get it? And it was a great job. It was just the wrong job for me. And the day came, the day came, and I won't go through all the details, but the day came where my boss, who was a senior vice president, her name was Phyllis Kennedy. I'll never forget. Phyllis Kennedy was an elderly lady at the time, uh, to me anyway, much, much older than I was. But anyway, one day she took me back in what was, what we coined as the Meet Jesus room. It was this big conference room, and when we'd see people go in there, we'd never see them again. I come on with somebody. And she sent me an email and said, Lee, I need to meet you in so-and-so room. And I was like, oh, snap, that's the Meet Jesus room. I knew what was coming down the pipe. 
Y'all got it? And I won't fill in all the, all the blanks, but there was this meeting. I was at a high position in the bank, but it, I was weighing over my head. Everybody in this church knew more about banking than me, all right? They had made me the national accounting manager. Come on, somebody. I had no idea what I was doing. You get it? I was faking it. Well, anyway, it came to the day where she called me back in that room, and, and long story short, she said, Lee, you don't love this job, do you? And I lied, y'all. I said, yes, I do, Phyllis. I love this job. I love you. I love my office. I love, I love everything about this job. I was lying. I didn't. When she said, Lee, and she kind of snickered, and <laughs> she said, Lee, and this is a line she said to me that I'll never forget. She says, Lee, life is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing, son. And she says, I'm going to do you a favor today, Lee, but it's not going to seem like a favor right now. She said, but you're a fine young man. You're a great young man. He says, and today, I'm going to let you go. And you need to find out why you're on the earth. Phyllis said that to me. Well, of course, the cloud that was over my head was, no, actually, Phyllis, you're going to disappear today. <laughs> you're going to mysteriously disappear. You're going to disappear. I'm going to put you in my trunk. This story is going to be on next 48, 48 hours, prime time, all those shows, because I couldn't believe it. At the time in my life, Shanae, my wife, was going through turmoil too. She was having these, uh, these panic attacks and anxiety attacks. She would get to the mall and forget why she came, forget where she parked her car, going through all kinds of stuff. And again, I'll have, you know, I'll have to spread this testimony out or I could be here all day. Well, anyway, what I did was, at that point, was started seeking God with my whole heart. Are y'all knowing what I'm talking about? Because now we have, because of the job that I had, had had a, a nice house in a nice neighborhood with a couple BMWs in the driveway. You get it what I'm saying? It was a, our, our life was at a level where when they say you're fired, uh, I might have to commit a crime. You get what I'm saying? That was my thinking. Y'all know I'm playing, right? But anyway, what I did was I started seeking God with my whole heart. And I'd been saved my whole, you know, since I was 18 years old. But that, that, what I did right there changed any, every single thing in my life. And I want to fill in the gaps for you with the word, what I found out about purpose and destiny that God has a plan for us. That's what I want to share with you. So if you're in this room today, and perhaps you're at, the, at a place in life where you're trying to figure it out, maybe, you get what I'm saying, maybe you're getting ready to go to college, maybe you're already, already been through college, and you're still trying to figure these things out, what am I supposed to do with my life? Today, I'm going to start breaking into that just in two parts. Now, I've got several, several series online, but today I really want to share with you some things. First of all, let me say this. Don't give up and don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. God's got purpose and destiny in store for you, and it will blow you away for what God has for you. I'm telling you, today as I stand here, I, I, it blows me away as I look out here. I'm so humbled that I get to do this. I'm so humbled as I look at my family, as I, as I look at my kids, and I look at what God has done in my life when I felt I was a failure, when I thought I couldn't do anything. And I don't want you to ever get there. And that's why you're here in this church, because God really does have great things in store for you. Are y'all ready to get it? Because I'll start crying if I keep talking. Are y'all with me? Amen, 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 amen. Make some noise for the band and my musicians, the singers, the dancers. Love y'all. Amen. All right, all right. We started this series called Living in Your Divine Destiny. And y'all, we're already in part seven. So we've been through several parts. And I, enc I encourage you, I urge you, uh, by the mercies of the living God, to go back. I'm trying to save you time and life. Wasted years. If you'll go back and understand these things that I've been teaching and stick with me. But the first, there, living in your divine destiny involves four major steps. And these steps are also the mission of our church. Somebody make some noise for Jesus. Yeah. The first one is this, know God. Say it, know God. Yeah. And I, what I mean by that, and we've shared about that. I took four weeks to talk about that. Knowing God is not, is not up here. It's a relationship. It's a relationship with God. Know God. Then the step number two is find freedom. 
Even if you're born again, all of us have been through something in life, some things in our past that may, keep it, may be keeping us locked in bondage. You know, it's a secret. It's that thing that's in your life that you know and God knows if it wasn't there, your life would be so much better. And so we took a couple weeks and talked about that. And, and the way I like to summarize it, you know what I'm talking about. It's that addiction. It's that secret. It's that secret affair. It's that, it's that thing that's going on in your life that nobody knows but God. But I like to say it like this. You can't see your future until you settle your past. You got to deal with that. You got to deal with that. Somebody hurt you in a, in a previous marriage or a relationship can really hamper the future that God has for you in a new relationship. Y'all get what I'm saying? Say, find freedom. Find freedom. That's the second one. Uh, and then the third one, which we found out, which we're on right now, is discover destiny. Discover destiny. They're going to catch up with me in the back there. I promise you. Discover destiny number three. Number three is, the, and we're going to spend this week, this Sunday, and next Sunday on that. And, and really, if there's any weeks in this series I could plead with you not to miss, it's these next two weeks. All right? This week and next week. You're here now, so could praise the Lord. And then finally, finally, this fourth thing is make a difference. You are not just alive to make a living. You're alive to live your making and make a difference. That's why your life, your life will make impact, Courtney, you know it. And, and so we're going to get to that. It's, that's what life is all about. And today I want to just begin to really break it down for you in the scriptures. Are y'all ready? Push the person next to you and say, this is for you. I ain't playing. Hit them back say, you too, you too, you too. Some of y'all ain't doing it. Y'all ain't paying attention yet. Come on, hit them, hit them. Say, this is for you today. Pay attention. All right, everybody look up here with your, with your eyes. Look right on me. Lock a laser in. Let me see y'all. All right, all right, let me see y'all. Okay, all the way over there in the back. Some of y'all hiding behind the curtain over there. All right, I see y'all. All All right, lock in today. Here we go, here we go. Let me give you this verse. This is our foundation verse, Pastor Joe. You know it. Everybody in here who's been to Destiny for any period of time knows Jeremiah 29, 11. We've been sharing this verse, but today the next couple verses tells us the main key to walking out purpose and destiny. All right, let's look at it. Jeremiah 29, 11, and I love it in this TPT, the passion chart. Y'all like it, Pastor Ron? Y'all like this? Watch this. Put it up there for me if you don't mind. Jeremiah 29, 11. Thank y'all. Here's what Yahweh says to you. I know all about the marvelous destiny I have in store for you, a future planned out in detail. This is God talking. My intention is not to harm you, but to surround you with peace and prosperity and to give you a beautiful, beautiful future glistening with hope. How many of y'all want that? Everybody does. Let me see your hand. Come on, somebody, if you don't want that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is God saying, this is what I've got in store for you. Now here, verse 12 and 13 tell us the most important point and aspect in walking that out. Are y'all ready? Here we go. Verse 12 says this. When you call on me and come to me in prayer, say pray. I will listen to your every word. Watch this. If you reach out to me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. God says if you'll make it a point to look to me not just to your teacher come on some of your teachers some people in your life have told you some disappointing things but God says no 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 come to me ask me about you ask me about your future talk to me I know they've they're telling you from their experience talk to me because I know you and you wouldn't be alive if I if I hadn't had something specific for you to do Are y'all listening to me? Your mom and dad might have not planned for you, but God did plan for you. And that's why you're alive. Are y'all listening to me? And listen to what he says here. This last part, he says, I will, where is it? I will regain all that you've lost, I will restore. Anybody took some L's in life? You've took some, taken some losses, maybe in marriage, maybe with kids, maybe in homes, maybe in cars, maybe in jobs. God said, I've got something better in store for you. Hit the person next door to you say, God's got much more in store for you. Now watch, y'all. This is why 
You hear me over and over and over recommend prayer. And I'm telling you, I'm pleading with you by the mercies of God. God is saying, if you'll just talk to me. Now watch, y'all. This is so important because what God has in store for you is much bigger than you can handle on your own. You need him, and you've got to start a habit now of getting together with him on a daily basis. And what I always recommend, you hear me say it every week, five, five, five. Just take, if you'll just take 15 minutes. Come on, is your future worth 15 minutes a day? Five minutes to just get with God in prayer. Start like this. Five minutes in worship. Any order you want, just take five minutes. Take a minute and just worship him, right? Five minutes and get in his word. Five minutes in prayer, five minutes in worship, five minutes in his word. Just a little bit, just in an organized fashion. If you'll just do that on a daily basis, what you're saying to God is, God, you matter. Your opinion matters more than mine. Your opinion matters more than my mom, my dad, my boss, everybody. What you think about, you've got the very hairs on my head numbered. You know who I am. You made me the way I am. You know what I'm supposed to do, and I'm alive because you've given me breath. Are y'all listening to me? That's going to be the most important thing you do in life. Y'all see it right there? Now watch this. Here's why. Here's why. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. King James, old King Jimmy version. Look what it says. For the gifts and callings of, calling of God are without repentance. What the Bible is saying to us here, every single person that comes into the earth comes with gifts and a call from God. If they never turn to God, if they never look to God, God has still equipped them with what they need to make it in the earth. Every single person. Have you ever heard this, this verse in, in uh, Matthew? I can't remember where it is, but it says, many are called, but few are chosen. And the Bible's talking about God's got a calling and a purpose for everyone, but few walk it out. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. God's got a purpose and a call for everybody. But it really is those who lock in with God who can walk it out. Are y'all with me? Now watch this. Look over. Let's look. Here, let's find out what the purpose of God is for every single person. Watch this. This is so important that you understand this first part of the message that I'm sharing with you right here. Because if you don't get this part, it doesn't matter how much money, the great job. Come on. You can ask great people. You can ask great singers. Go ahead and ask Prince. Oh, you can't. Oh, go ahead and ask Whitney Houston. Oh, you can't. How about Michael Jackson? They discovered their gifts. Come on, somebody. Some of the greatest talent in the world, but dead. Are y'all with me? I'd rather be without billions and alive. Come on, y'all get it? And I'm on my way to heaven. I want to see Jesus, but not today. Anybody else? I got a family. Y'all see my family? Amen? So, 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 watch this. Look at this. Y'all want to know the will of God? It's all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament in several scriptures. Let me, and watch, stick with me on this. Look at 1 Thessalonians. They'll put it up here on the screen. Chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Watch what it says here. Here's the will of God for your life. Watch this. Always be joyful. Oh, pastor, you don't know what I've been through. Never stop praying. Verse 18, watch this. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. He said, be joyful, pray, and be thankful through in the middle of everything. Watch this. There's several scriptures all throughout the Old Testament and New. Micah 6, 8. They're, they're all over. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. B, how does it say it? It says, uh, uh, let me, let me, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Let me, I, I wrote down some of it. Don't be conformed to this world but, or the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you'll be able to test and prove what is God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It sounds to me, from Genesis to Revelation, that the will of God is more about the posture of your heart than the position of your career. Now understand why. Understand why the posture of your heart with God is more important than the career that you take because life's going to change. Markets are going to change. Stuff is going to change. Companies are going to change. But if you're connected to God, God says, I can move you. 
If, you're, if you stay connected to me, whatever happens out there and you're with me, I got you. But if you lose that connection with God, if you, never, if you never acquire that relationship, never get that relationship with God, I'm telling you, you're in for a downfall. And even if you amass, Jesus said it like this, what is the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You can amass a whole lot of money and end up in prison. Ah, come on, somebody. Have a mansion in Miami and L.A. Unless money starts flowing, it's going to say, repossessed y'all get what I'm saying and it don't matter who you hang out with come on hit the person next will y'all help me preach today tell the person next to me you got to get real relationship with God that's going to be your key to success y'all got that all right all right I'm telling you what it is right here and I did this early on in life and I'm just telling you this is going to change everything all right all right now let's go y'all want to go now by the way let me just throw this scripture out you that's not in my notes the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, just jot it, jot it down because I didn't put it in my notes. But Proverbs 19, 21 says that many plans are in a man's mind, but it's the Lord's purpose for him that will prevail. It's God's plan for you that's going to prevail. You've got to have that. Are y'all with me? That's why this is so important. Yeah, you may figure it out and figure out your gifts and work in that and amass a bunch of money, but at the end, and I'll get to that in a minute. All right, y'all with me? Amen, amen, amen. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts, all right? How many of y'all like getting gifts? Anybody like getting gifts? Okay, y'all who don't have your hand up, I do. So please, uh, all right, just, okay. If y'all don't like getting gifts, maybe you, you must like receiving, giving them. Praise the Lord. Everybody likes getting gifts, isn't that right? All right, God loves giving gifts too. And so today I want to talk to you just about these gifts that God has given for everyone. And they're really a key. The gifts God gives explains the purpose for us. All right, three main gifts I'm going to talk about right here, categories of gifts. Number one, are y'all ready? Come on, push the person next to you. Say, lock in, lock in. I'm passing. Come on, lock in. Y'all with me? Y'all with me over here on these sides? Y'all good? All right, watch this. Number one, first gift is eternal life. Eternal life, this really is the gift that qualifies you for heaven, all right? Romans 6 and verse 23 says this. Y'all know it? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It's a gift. That's what, that's what qualifies you for heaven. Y'all want that. Y'all want eternity, right? Come on, y'all know that we don't get to just live on forever in these bodies. We're all going to die. Do y'all know that? If Jesus doesn't come, you're going to die. You're, and the window is a short, small window, all right? And I'll get to that later. But watch what else the Bible. So we need this gift. Some of y'all haven't accepted. Some of you haven't accepted this gift. The gift of eternal life. And I'm telling you, that's the most important gift that God has. Right there. Just receiving him. And I'll give you an opportunity to receive him. You can even receive him right now while you're in the service. You need that, all right? Look what Ephesians 2 and verse 8 says about it. For... For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the what? It's a gift of God. Eternal life is a gift of God, and that has everything to do with your eternity. All right? That, but these next two categories of gifts, and these next two gifts, have everything to do with right now here on earth. These are vitally important. Are you all with me? Here's the second one. second one is the gift of the Holy Spirit. This gift empowers you for your God-given responsibilities while here on earth. The Holy Spirit, are y'all with me? Here, let's look, about, look at it because this is vitally important. The Holy Spirit isn't just for you to feel real good and jump up and down and pray in tongues. It's much more than that. It's a, it's, it's a purpose for God giving you this gift. And this explains a lot about who we are and what we need. Watch this. In, in Acts chapter 1, the first, book of, first chapter of Acts, verse 4 and 5, then I'm going to jump to verse 8. But watch this. Jesus talking here. This is on the, remember, after Jesus had been to the cross, risen from the dead, walked the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, ministering, preaching about the kingdom of God, right doing miracles 40 after he had already hung on the cross and then on that last day he's standing and he's talking to hundreds of people and he says this to him he says do not leave jerusalem but wait for the what 
gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. Verse 5. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Down, at, down in verse 8, he says the purpose for this gift. Watch this. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Say power. Mm -hmm. That's dunamis. In the, in the Greek, it means power to perform, the ability to do, right? He says, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That's where they were. In Judea, the nation where they were. In Samaria, the, the surrounding nations, and all around the earth. He said, you're going to be a witness here in your town, here around your town, in your state, in your country. Everywhere you go, there's somebody who's going to have this gift that's now qualified and enabled and empowered to do what I've called them to do, which is every believer be a witness for me. Oh, pastor. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How many of y'all have had a good steak at a steakhouse? Come on, some. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. What's one of the things I do? When I do, when I go to some place that's delicious, I'm going to tell somebody. And that's a steak. If I see a good movie, I'm going to talk about it. Y'all get what I'm saying? I'm going to tell somebody else because I want them to enjoy it too. But hold on. God of the universe saved your life, took you out of the pit of hell. And you can't, through your lifestyle, be a, a representative of him. God said, no, 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 that's why I saved you. I didn't just save you, give the gift of salvation and the Holy Ghost just to, just to make it to heaven and just to come to church once every so often when you feel like it. There's a purpose for this power because in the long run, it's really going to matter. Are y'all listening to me? That third gift is the, that second gift is the Holy Spirit. Y'all get that? There's much more in store for us. So God said, you need this power on the inside. When you start working a job, when you start, there's much more that God has in store for you because of the environment that you're in. And he wants you to stand out like a heel thumb right in the middle of your company, right on the, on the middle of that football field, right in, the, in that business. Everywhere you go, God wants you to stand out as one of his people. And the way he says he wants to do that is through blessing and favor and goodness and the fruit of the Spirit on you. You people at work ought to look at you and go, there's something different about you. Are y'all listening to me? Come on, somebody. All right, all right. That's that second. That second, it has to do with the Holy Spirit. Y'all with me? Now watch. Watch this. This is important because there's another passage in the next chapter of Acts that Peter says, he gets up and preaches on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came, and uh, he preaches this, and he says, he gives this quote out of the book of Joel. Listen to what he says. He says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Peter stands up and says, because oh, they're all wondering, why did they get the gift of the Holy Spirit? Why are they, what is going on here? And he prophesied out of the book of Joel. He said, now God is putting his spirit on everybody that will trust him. Why? Why? He says, because not only back in the, old, in the Old Testament, there were just a few select people that had the ability to preach, to prophesy. It was just on the priests, the prophets, and the kings. The Spirit of God would come. So Peter was now letting, God was letting the people know, now it's a whole new season. This Spirit of God is on everybody who gets born again now. And you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you need this power to do what God has called you to do. Are y'all listening to me? We all need it. Say, we all need the Spirit. All right? All right. Now watch this, which takes me to this third gift. By the way, let me just say something about that. You know, oftentimes in church, we think that it's just the five-fold ministry, the ministry staff that is enabled to pray for people. I get it all the time. Pastor, I need, I need, pastor, I need pastor to pray for me. Don't be sending no Sinead. Don't be sending no Bob or Larry. I need Pastor Lee. Like, I've got some supernatural power that you don't. I don't. Are y'all listening to me? 
No, 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 no. That's what this passage is saying. I put it on everybody so we all have this ability. Everybody has the same ability in the kingdom of God. Now, some of us have been in it longer and know more. Y'all get it? I've got a unique call. But this brings me to the next category of gifts called spiritual gifts. Now, this is un the uniqueness that every believer gets. Now, by the way, every person... Every person, every human being that's not born has gifts that God has placed in them. But many of them sit dormant until God's Spirit ignites those gifts. Are y'all with me? Just like the ground, just like the ground, there's stuff in the ground, but if, there, if there's no rain that comes in, it, it can sit dormant. The Holy Spirit will bring alive the gifts that God set on the inside of you at birth and more. We'll ignite those gifts through the Holy Spirit. Say, I need the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you do. All right, and I've got several series on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can get into that. Now, here's this third category of gifts called spiritual gifts. Are y'all with me? Spiritual gifts. Now, watch this. These spiritual gifts are oftentimes a mystery to people and Paul knew that so he said this look over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1 watch what he says now dear brothers and sisters regarding the question about your special abilities or spiritual gifts what translation do I want this one in in regular King J New King James right here if you can that's fine if you get here but it says spiritual gifts in the King James Regarding the question you had about spiritual gifts or special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. Why would he say that? Because many believers are. In fact, in fact, the Bible describes these gifts have been given out to all of the body of Christ, but it, it gives us this metaphor of being like a body the body of Christ. Now think about it. And, and, and different people have done studies on Christians and said, I read this study that said 87% of Christians don't understand or know their spiritual gift. Now think about it. If we relate it to the body, look, y'all see me? What if 80% of my body, 87% of my body, about 90% didn't know what it was supposed to do? Well, first of all, I couldn't stand here. Because my legs, my feet wouldn't do what they were made to do. And this tells and explains why oftentimes we as the body of Christ are immobilized, dysfunctional, because we don't know what each of us are made to do. And Paul spends an extensive amount of time explaining these things, and I'll get to that next week. Are y'all with me? Uh, that's, that's, that's part two, because we all fit in together to this. Are y'all with me? Amen. So look at, look at the same chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 in the NL, NLT. Watch this. A NLT, yes. Verse 7, if you don't mind. Thank you. A spiritual gift is given to who? Each of us. Why? So we can help each other. Y'all see, there's a connectivity with these gifts. I, I need you and you need me. I need the sound team or y'all won't hear me. I need the band and the singers. I need you. I need the dancers. We need each other. There is this, this connectivity that we all need and that the Bible talks about. My gift alone is no good. The Bible, Jesus described it, or Paul describes it like this. He says, the hand can't look at the foot and say, I don't need you. And he spent a whole chapter explaining the details of this, how important. Turn to the person sitting next to you and say, I really need you. Turn to him on the other side and say, you too, you too, even though I don't know you, you too. All right? Y'all get this? So it's a, it, they're spiritual gifts. Now let's dive into it because this, this is some of the most important truths you'll need. Let me give you a definition. What, here's my definition of a spiritual gift. Watch this. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that we can, number one, connect with each other, be strengthened together, and advance his purposes in this world. Y'all get it? I need your gift. You need my gift. God needs all of us to work together to be collectively the body of Christ and to be effective. 
And there's no weaker part. We all need to be a part of this and play our role so that not only, watch y'all, not only can you individually live out the purpose and destiny God has for you, but we collectively as a body can be effective as the body of Christ. Now, all this relates to the end times. All of this relates to Christ coming back. All of this all fits together. And if you'll stick with me this week and next, I'll help lay out some framework for this. Are y'all with me? Hit the person next to me and say, you even look better now than you did when you got here. I ain't playing with you. Yeah. All right, turn over in your Bible. Turn over to your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read for the back, verse 7 and 8 in the NIV. Then I'm going to read verse 11 and 12. Y'all don't mind getting in the Bible, do you? Somebody said that to me before we got to service. and said, you know, I'm so glad I come to this church. I come to this church because you teach the Bible. And that's why I'm here. 7 and 8 in the, in the, uh, New King, in the uh, NIV and then 11 and 12 in the New King James. All right, here we go. But to each one of us, grace has been given. That word grace is charis. It's also translated gift. It's the same word, all right? It's grace gift. To each one of us, a grace gift or a charis has been given as Christ apportioned it. Look at verse 8. Say, I've got a gift. And chances are you've got several spiritual gifts, grace gifts, supernatural gifts, supernatural ability that is beyond your natural ability. Y'all get that? Beyond your natural ability. All right, look at verse 8. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, Jesus, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. He gave gifts. Say, I've got gifts. And they're unique. Y'all get that? They're unique from the person sitting next to you. Jack's gifts aren't Dana's gifts. Dana's gifts aren't Jack's gifts. Patty's gifts aren't John's gifts. John's gifts aren't Patty's gifts. Marty's gifts, are, I could go down the whole line here and all through this congregation. We all have different gifts, but notice what we read already, so we can be of help to each other. Are y'all with me? All right, now look at verse 11. Look at, look at verse 11 in the New King James. Yes, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. So he says, this isn't for everybody. This is my fold ministry gift. There's five of these gifts. I am in one of those gifts. I'm a pastor teacher. Y'all with me? But watch the purpose. The purpose is for the equipping of the saints. Say, that's me. Say it real loud. That's me. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or building, building up of the body of Christ. He said the five-fold ministry, there's just some that are those. There's, a, there's some that are those. And their job is to equip the people for work of the ministry. Every believer is a minister. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Some of y'all hate your job so much you want to quit it and, and, and open up a website and start preaching. Mm -mm. You're going to make one of the biggest mistakes of your life right there. That's for some. That's for some. Are y'all with me? But all of us are called into the ministry, and that's where many people get confused because we are all called into the ministry, but that doesn't mean the full-time ministry. That means you've been given gifts to put you somewhere as Christ's representative. God needs people on the football field, on the baseball diamond. He needs people over at the Walmart. He needs people in movies. He needs people every single place representing him. That doesn't mean you're going to walk around and carry around your body, but you're going to be a representative. The Bible says, now you're ambassadors for the kingdom of God. You're, amb you're representatives of God. Are y'all listening to me? This is one of the most important things for the body of Christ, and particularly in these days. Are y'all with me? Now watch, I want to show you how this connects to your vocation. All right, so just stick with me. Stick with me. Are y'all with me? All right, say, I'm gifted. Amen. So y'all saw that. All right, to each, uh, jump down in your Bible. Now, what do I do with these gifts? How do I find, here's what we Here's my next phase, and we're closing with this, this information right here. 
you've got to discover your gift. You've got to develop that gift. And then you've got to do that gift. You've got to discover it, all right? Let's talk about that just for a minute because that's typically, this is where people miss it in just discovering their gifts. By the way, this is what we're going to help you out with. Beginning next week, we have a three-week class after service. It's going to start probably about 1 o'clock because next week we have, we've got our fair out there that's going on. And then at, we're going to start our first class, our, our first class of Level Up. It's three classes. The first one just for, it's primarily for new members, people who have never been here, haven't connected with Destiny, you haven't been through a membership class. Get into that first class. Get in. Get online right now and register for that. That second class is where we're going to identify your gift, personality, spiritual. The Bible lists about 29 gifts, spiritual gifts. But those gifts mean everything. Those gifts mean everything to you personally and us collectively. Are y'all with me? All right. And then that third class is where we're going to help you use that gift. We're going to help you do it by getting involved, getting connected. Hit the person next to you and say, get connected. Stop playing with me. Y'all get it? It's vitally important that you get in those classes. That's next week, y'all. Next week. I I can hardly wait. All right, so let's talk about this discovery of gifts. Discover the gifts God has given you. Turn over to Romans chapter 12, verse 6, NIV. All right? We have different gifts according to the grace. Now, look at this passage given to each of us. Just look at the first part. We have different gifts. That word right there is charisma. Charisma. According to the grace, charis. It's the same word. Charisma, charisma. Y'all get it? It's the same word. It's, it's grace gifts. God has given us gifts by grace. And all of us get them differently. All right? Watch what he says here. And he goes, I don't know, do I want to read any further than that? Let's, let's save that rest of it for later. I think I'll get to that uh, verse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's enough. Let's leave it right there. Now, here's what's so important, y'all. You discovering and identifying that gift. I I reached in our kitchen drawer. Look at my wife shaking her head. I reached in one of the kitchen drawers this morning to prove my point. I'm going to bring him home. I'm going to bring him home. She knows when stuff usually comes to the church and the office, it disappears never to be seen again. I reached in one of the drawers, and I pulled out these things, and... Watch, because I want you to understand this. You've been gifted differently. This is what makes you unique from everyone in the world. Because design determines your destiny. Design determines your destiny. Or, I like to say it like this, production precedes, or purpose precedes production. The purpose of a thing precedes the making of the thing. In other words, somebody didn't just make this utensil and go, hmm, I wonder what I'm going to use that for. The purpose preceded the production of this. In other words, there was a need, then the maker created this thing for the need. The design of it determines what it's for. So this ladle I'm probably not going to eat a bowl of soup but I'm going to put the soup in the bowl with this I'm probably not going to try to get the soup out of the pot with this it's not going to work this is made for something else but the design determines its destiny so same thing with God you d- God didn't make you and they'll go Hmm, I wonder what I'm going to use him or her for. The purpose preceded the production. You weren't made until there was a reason for you to be made. And it doesn't matter if your parents didn't plan for it. God planned for it. And why you see things differently than the person. Have y'all seen this? You walk into a room and some people, let, let's just say, let's just say, we walk into a room, we're all eating, eating. We're eating food, right? Paper plates. And, we, and somebody drop, walks in and they drop their paper plate. 
Somebody who's gifted with a, a, a gift of service will run immediately and start cleaning it up. Another person who's got the gift of teaching where you say, well, you know why that happened? That happened because... The administration gift will walk in and go, okay, somebody go, okay, you run over there and get the broom. You over there. Now you run and get him another place. They got these giftings. They got these management skills. Have you ever noticed somebody that they walk in the room and immediately they're seeing different things in you? This, this interior designer uh, that we love, Ava Williams, she went home to be with the Lord, but she would walk, she's the one who designed this room. She designed our home and all this stuff. And she would walk in a room and she was just so eccentric. She would walk in and she would my father <laughs> it was just drywall they hadn't even painted anything there was no paint she was just walking we wanted her to come in and give us ideas and she was oh my father and she was really excited but she goes do you see the curtain do you see this hanging over there oh here's what I see oh yes thank you my father and you get it and I was just standing back like looking at Shanae going but she's so gifted and she could see what we couldn't see. Come on, somebody. How many of you know that y'all, uh, uh, those of us that are gifted with music, hear what others can't hear? Right? Every one of you, you see things differently, possibly very differently than your spouse. But the two of you together, if you use those strengths together, it, it, it just makes a whole world of difference. All right, all right. So you've got to discover that gift, and I'm going to help you on, on uh, beginning next Sunday. Y'all with me? And, and let me give you one more verse. How's my time? Oh, I hear my piano player. Look over at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Watch. I love this in the Amplified Bible. Look at this. This is one of those verses that I love right here. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. This is where I get you are a custom-made, one-of-a-kind masterpiece. Nobody can do what you do like you do but you. Come on, hit the person next to you and say, oh, my God, I'm glad to be sitting next to you. And you turn to him and say, I'm glad to be sitting next to me, too. I mean, oh, you. Do y'all get it? We're all uniquely made. We're God's own handiwork, his workmanship, handcrafted, right? Recreated in Christ Jesus. That's that born anew, born again experience. Born anew that we may do. You're born again so you can do those good works which God predestined. God's got a plan for you before you got here. Come on, does that give anybody relief? Like, yes! How do I get it, Pastor? You got to get with God, first of all. All right? God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. Look at this. That we should walk in them, living the jacked up life, the broke down life. God want to jack me up. God wants to mess up my... No, he doesn't. God wants to give you the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. Come on, somebody make some noise in here. These are those verses that got me excited because I was so broke down and out. Y'all with me? Here, now watch. So what else, Pastor? We said the first thing was I got to discover the gift. Next, I've got to develop it. I've got to develop it. Y'all get this? Y'all listen to me. You've got to be willing to be bad at something first before you're good at it. Many people quit because they weren't great at first. Try that in bike riding or walking. You're one year old. Bam. Oh, I quit. I'm never going to do it. You got to be real, willing to be bad at it at first. Come on, somebody. Are y'all listening to me? Tell the person next to you, say, it's going to get better. Don't panic. But don't quit along the way. Don't quit along the way. Are y'all listening to me? There's a parable in Matthew chapter 25 that says one guy got five talents, one guy got two, and one guy got one. The guy who had five turned his into ten. The guy who had two turned his into four. The guy who had one went and buried his, and God reprimanded, reprimanded the one who got one. He said, why did you take your one and bury it? He said, because I didn't want to lose it. I was doing you a favor. He said, take the one from him and give it to the guy. Not who had four now, but the guy who has ten. Why? Because he's going to do something. He's going to take whatever I give him and develop it. Make it better. Be the best at it you can be. God's gift to you is the gift. Your gift to God is making that gift the best you can. Be the best at it. 
Come on, somebody. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Last thing, last thing is do it. The last thing is do it. Look over in your Bible real quickly. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. We're closing. First Peter chapter 4. Watch this. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Now, here's the key, y'all. Look at this. Do you, do you have a gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Did you hear what he said? He said, when you're doing what you've been created to do, God gets glorified. When you've taken the gift of God and said, God, here's the five you gave me. I turned it into ten. I turned that speaking gift into an ability to win people to Jesus. I turned that gift into an ability to help young people walk out their dreams. I took that gift that you gave me and gave people an ability to go get a home to refinance, to, to help their dreams come to pass. God, I use my gifts to help mankind, to help them be better. God says, you just gave glory to me. Come on, somebody. In closing, in closing, I'm closing right now. How many of you in school hated final exams? Look, back there with the both hands up, they got feet. All right, let me, let me tell you, I'm closing right now. Listen to this. Life has a final exam. But here's the good news. If you've accepted Jesus, it's only good news. Now watch. Only two questions on the exam. First question is this. What did you do with Jesus? All right? Now, if you say, well, Jesus, I sang in the choir. He's going to be like, so? Jesus, I went to church and paid my tithes, T-I-D-E-S. He's going, so, so, not good enough. The only answer he wants to hear is, I made him Lord of my life. I gave him my life. Right answer, come on in. And only if you pass the first question do you get the second one. Second question is this, what did you do with the gifts that What did you do with those gifts? Did you use those gifts just for you, your four and no more? Or did you use them for the betterment of mankind? Did you make people better with what I gave you? Did you help people with what I gave you? Did you lift them up? Did you build them up with what I gave you? Or did you tear them down? Did you tear them down? Did you abuse kids? Did you hurt people with the gifts that I gave you? And listen to me. Let me just make it real plain for you. I know I'm over time. I'm getting ready to dismiss. Life is short, y'all. You don't have, you can't just wait. Well, you know, Pastor, thanks for sharing that. Uh, maybe, next month, maybe next month I'm going to make some choices. You may not have next month. I've done a lot of funerals before I wanted to do them. Of some dear, sweet people. And I can say they passed the test. Both. Are y'all with me? Several people. Early, or much younger than me. You get it? So that day, tomorrow isn't promise. Question number one today, with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one moving around. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this question is going to come up again in life at the final exam. You're going to face God. And he's going to say, you remember that day, our September 29th? You had an opportunity to accept me, make me Lord. What did you do? He already knows, but he wants you to know. Here's your opportunity. If you're in this place today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, friend, can I assure you, God's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you, and he wants you saved because he's got great things in store for you. So without any further ado, if you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this call is for you. Blood that he shed was for you. For you and for this moment. Why? Because eternity is at stake. 
If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, here's your opportunity to make him so. Say this prayer out of your mouth loud enough that you hear it with your own ears and you know it in your heart. You mean it from your heart. Say this prayer if you want Jesus as Lord. Say this after me. Say this. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus died. I believe that Jesus died. And rose again from the and dead. rose again from the dead. Just for me. Just for me. You're my Lord. You're my Lord. My Savior. My Savior. My healer. My healer. My provider. My provider. My protector. My protector. My future. My future. Lord, you're my everything. Lord, you're my everything. Right now. Right now. I'm saved. I'm saved. For Forever forgiven. Forever forgiven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Will you give God a shout of praise? Come on, somebody make some noise in this place. I wouldn't dare make you stand up on your feet or come down here, but I do want to know, if you said that prayer for the first time, will you just wave at me real big and say, Pastor, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I see your hand. See you. Anybody else? Wave them up real awesome, big. Thank you over awesome, there, baby. Thank you. Awesome. Anybody else? Way back there. I see awesome. you over there. Anybody else? Awesome. Will y'all make some noise for all those? Baby, tell them what to do. Will yes, you do that for me? Yes, yes, yes. We're so proud of each and every one of you who said that prayer and meant it in your heart today. We would love to connect with you on this journey with Christ. Yeah. We want to help you with your next steps. So if you're watching online, we ask that you text the word SAVE, S-A-V-E-D, to 336-800-8188. If you're in the building, you can do that as well. Or you can scan the QR code on the chair back in front of you that says, I said yes. Right. Or connect. Awesome. If you have a connect card, you can fill that out turn it in when the ushers pass the buckets or you can put it in the receptacle on your way out today but we want to help you on this journey we want to connect with you we want to let you know what that next step is and we're just going to send you a letter we're not going to call you and bother you but we are going to send you a letter letting you know what that next step is amen we right. want you to get everything god has for come you. on for real how you get that is get the word and yeah. get connected and we want to help you on that journey. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now it's time for offering for well, generosity. How many of y'all know that God's in love with you and he's got a great future in store for you? One of the principles in the word of God is sowing and reaping. Y'all know that? The Bible lets us know in the earth that as long as the earth remains, there's always going to be seed, time, and harvest. And it's a principle that extends not only in life. You give a smile, you get smiles. You give friendship, you get friendship. If you need more return from God, you've got to sow. Yes. God's number one business is getting people in heaven. That's why we're here. We're here to help people get in the kingdom of God. So if you sow into us, help us to get this message out, to extend and expand this ministry. How many of y'all appreciate this word today? Well, everybody in this place, would you get a seat? It's a principle I learned years ago. Sow every time I get an opportunity. We all get it? Amen? Yes, we're going to have one last song. The ushers are going to pass the buckets. You can pass the buckets, and we're going to worship as we give. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and pass the buckets. And if you made a decision, be sure and put that decision card Heart inside, inside of the buckets. buckets. Or in the receptacle. Also, our prayer partners will be prayer down partners here are coming down. at the end of service, and you can come on down if you want prayer of agreement for, for anything. anything. We want to pray with service. you. How many Amen. of y'all received that word today? Isn't that good news? Y'all come back next week. Bring somebody with you. My prayer partners are coming down. Thank y'all, ministers. Amen, amen. And if it's your first time here, Pastor and I would love, love, love to meet and greet you. Come on over in Guest Central. We have a special gift for the you. The band and the singers are going to yeah. dismiss you. Hang out and worship with us for a minute. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, for your grace. We're thankful for your word. Oh, 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 oh. Praise him on our way out. Oh, 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 oh. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of Glory.